Burst fire weapons in the Battlefield franchise are few and far between. The majority of players will prefer to select a fully automatic weapon, which inherently gives a higher damage potential. However, I think there is one weapon that properly stands out as the all-time favourite burst fire rifle in the franchise. Russian made, highly accurate, and an absolute beast in the right hands. Today on Through the Ages, we're looking into the AN-94 Abakan. The AN-94 stands as one of my all-time favourite weapons in the Battlefield franchise. It made its debut appearance in the original Bad Company game, but I got to know it a lot better in Bad Company 2. Following on from that, it appeared in Play for Free, Battlefield 3, and was added as part of the Weapon Crate DLC into Battlefield 4. The rifle was designed as a potential replacement to the AK-74 series of rifles that are currently in use by the Russian Armed Forces. But due to its complex recoil management system and the cost of the unit, the rifle was never fully adopted. It can fire two bullets from the barrel before the recoil effect is felt by the holder, allowing those two bullets to land extremely close together, and that's what's said to make this rifle more effective than other alternatives. Let's have a look and see how it performs in our first game today, Bad Company 2. Two. Here, the AN-94 at the start of the game's life was widely considered to be the best assault rifle on offer, and it had a max damage of 20 per bullet. As the gun fires a two-round burst at close range, a few bursts of this rifle, and it was capable of just about killing anything. And if you added Magnum ammo into the equation, that gives you 25% more damage, and the rifle became borderline OP. Perhaps that's why I liked it so much, and I'm almost certain it's the reason that DICE ended up nerfing the rifle's damage down to 16.7, and that levelled it off with many of the other fully automatic weapons in the game. That nerf essentially stopped the AN-94 becoming a close-range rifle, and its intended use, long-range accuracy, really came into play. The iron sights on the weapon are... okay, but much of the sight takes up valuable screen real estate, and switching to something like the ACOG both helps increase your visibility and your long-range effectiveness. Despite the rifle being a very good tool for those long-range gunfights, you might find that the upwards recoil of 0.6, one of the highest in the game, to be a little bit concerning. But with practice, it really does become quite easy to control. If you pair it with the Marksman Training Specialization, that reduces weapon spread by 25%, the rifle almost becomes a counter-recon weapon. Long-range targets are really easy to hit with the first few bullets, but because the weapon needs to reset to the centre of the screen to get the recoil to set back to zero after each burst, the follow-up bursts can often come a little bit too late and your target might have moved away. You can therefore consider the AN-94 to be a bit more of a dedicated weapon than others. You need to commit more time and effort to it when playing to really reap its benefits. It's got a long reload time of 3.4 seconds with no ammo remaining, and that makes it quite a bit of a slog in close quarters. And you'll really see it in a better light if you keep a little bit of distance between you and your target, that and the fact that you'll hear the amazing gun sound. Because when you're a little bit further away from the action in Bad Company 2, this thing sounds like a firecracker. I still use it to this day, haven't really ever let go of the fact that it was extremely powerful when it first came out. And I don't know, I've just got the hang of using it, I know how to tap fire it effectively, and it works out really well for me, a good medium to long range rifle. It's an extremely rewarding weapon to use. But now, it's time to head over to Battlefield 3. Here in Battlefield 3, the AN-94 is 
a little bit less of a popular choice, although I can't really figure out why, because the gameplay in the background, Grand Bazaar Rush, went on an insane back rate with this thing and had a really good time with it. I genuinely can't understand why this weapon isn't used a little bit more. It still offers that unique weapon style, that two round burst fire mode, and this time it actually benefits the long range soldier even more so than it did in Bad Company 2. It still offers the same base rate of 600 rounds rate of fire in automatic mode, an increased 1200 round theoretical rate of fire in burst fire, although it'd be extremely hard to hit that, you'd have to be clicking the mouse stupidly fast to get that kind of level, but the real gem here is the first shot recoil multiplier. This is the recoil that's added to the first shot that leaves the barrel. In burst fire mode, the AN94 has a multiplier value of zero. There is no recoil at all between the first and second shots. This means you're getting an accurate representation of the gun's real life purpose, landing two bullets extremely close together on your target. And because you're firing in burst mode, after each burst, the weapon resets to the center of the screen, meaning the recoil value again when you fire the next round is zero. This means you've got an extremely precise rifle that is great for accurately landing shots on long range targets. The only statistic that really matters when firing the AN94 in burst fire mode is the bullet spread, which when you're standing still is only very minimal at 0.2. So to use the AN94 to its fullest potential in Battlefield 3, simply stand still, pick a target and burst steady. You're almost guaranteed results every single time. The same drawbacks apply though from Bad Company 2. That 600 round rate of fire in fully auto makes the weapon extremely underpowered in close quarters engagements, and the reload situation is exactly the same. 2.45 seconds for the short reload and 3.4 seconds for the long reload. Not ideal in any scenario, but as before, if you stick to those medium and long range engagements with an ACOG sight, the AN94 will do you proud. Moving forward to the next game now, that's Battlefield 4. A latecomer to Battlefield 4, extremely late to the party, the AN94 was, not introduced into the full public game until May 2015, although a little bit earlier in the community test environment, that's 18 months after the game came out, the AN94 launched in what was called the Weapon Crate DLC, which was a small content drop created by Dice LA to complement the wash of free maps that they were releasing at the time. In that DLC, Dice LA also went about rebalancing and shifting a lot of the weapon mechanics overall, changing things like damage and suppression values across the board. The AN94 was one of the most heavily requested weapons to be brought back into Battlefield 4 because, as I've said for both Battlefield 3 and Bad Company 2, it offers this unique weapon experience, a two round burst fire mode. You don't get that on any other weapon in the game. It was also assigned starter weapon status as well, being offered as one of the first weapons that you could use jumping into the multiplayer for the first time. One key difference between the AN94 from past titles and it here in Battlefield 4 is the introduction of a fire rate limiter in burst fire mode. It was possible in previous games to make the weapon fire at an incredibly high 1200 rounds a minute, but here Dice LA limited the weapon to a maximum of 900 rounds a minute. This is likely to keep it in check alongside the other rifles and to stop hackers using clickbots to fire the weapon stupidly fast. It features the same high precision for long range targets as it did before, staying true to the reason why people love it so much. And it topped off an exceptional support campaign from Dice LA to fix Battlefield 4 and improve it as well. So the AN94 doesn't differ massively through the past Battlefield titles, but it certainly retained a special appeal. The reason it ended up in Battlefield 4 was because people requested it to be there, and still now, a year after its introduction, it's still being used regularly by a large number of the 150,000 people still playing Battlefield 4 every single night. Thank you very much for watching. 
don't forget to leave your suggestions down below in the comments for the next weapon that you want to see on Through the Ages. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.